After someone has been missing for many years, it's not unusual to have a court declare the individual who has vanished to be legally deceased. This process not only addresses the missing person's estate, but can also provide some sense of closure to family and loved ones who have suffered long enough. Although there have been incidents where those declared legally dead have resurfaced years later, it's generally a sign that the case is unresolved and has run out of leads. September 10th, 2001. Senea Philip. 31-year-old female Senea Philip was last seen shopping in her Lower Manhattan neighborhood on September 10th, 2001. The physician, who was in the final year of her residency, had the misfortune of being last seen on the night before the city she called home would be shaken by a decade-defining event. Two separate investigations into Senea's disappearance have led to compelling but inconclusive outcomes. Over 20 years later, no solid evidence exists to support any of the explanations of where she may be. So what did happen to Senea Philip? Did the young doctor fall victim to an accident or foul play? Or did she use the chaos of 9-11 to run away and start a new life? Perhaps even sending this cryptic postcard over a decade later? Or as her husband and family have always believed, did she perish while heroically trying to help victims of the train setter attack that morning? Senea Phillips was originally from India, but had moved to upstate New York with her parents as a child. After attending college, she married her longtime boyfriend, Ron Lieberman, in May of 2000, and the couple moved into a lower Manhattan apartment complex known as Battery Park City. Both were graduates of medical school and were pursuing their careers as physicians with internships at different medical centers in Manhattan. The day that Senea was last seen, she had been off from work. She had breakfast with her husband that morning, spoke with her mother, and then spent most of the day cleaning the apartment and doing errands. At around 4 p.m., Senea left their apartment and dropped some clothes off at a dry cleaner's. She then went to do some shopping at a popular local department store, spending over $500 on clothes, lingerie, shoes, and bed linens. The security camera footage and the credit card records from that shopping trip would become the last official time the world would see Senea Phillips. Some have speculated that in the store security footage, Senea was with another woman, although the video doesn't make that conclusive. Furthermore, the woman seen near Senea in some of the security video has never been identified or come forward. What Senea did after shopping is unknown. There would be no additional video footage or credit card records to indicate her actions the rest of that evening. Did she meet up with someone, have plans to go out for dinner or drinks, or to visit someone's apartment? Or did she fall victim to foul play? What is known about the evening of September 10th is that when her husband returned home, sometime after midnight, he discovered she was not there, apparently still out. Her husband would later comment that he wasn't alarmed at her not being home, given her recent social life. The next morning around 6.30 a.m., as Ron prepared for work, there was still no sign of Senea at the apartment. But once again, he was not alarmed as she had a recent pattern of coming home between 7 and 9 a.m. after late nights out. Less than two hours after leaving their apartment for work, the first plane would strike the North Tower at 8.46 a.m. The events that followed would catapult Lower Manhattan into a war zone, with mass casualties, falling debris, fires, and panic. As posters of the missing blanketed the city, family and loved ones of those who worked or were known to be in the area of the Trade Center began searching for them hoping for the best as they began the long and arduous process of coming through smoking piles of dust and rubble. Understandably, law enforcement and first responders were not able to process the thousands of missing persons reports in the immediate aftermath of the attacks. This led many families of those missing, including Senea's husband, to hire a private detective. Ron's investigation was conducted prior to the police one, but ultimately yielded very usable clues Two items that did emerge, though, which may have indicated Senea returned to the apartment earlier that morning. The first was a call made from inside the apartment to Ron's cell phone at around 4.30 a.m. Initially hopeful it might be Senea, it was later written off. Ron would recall that he had woken up in the middle of the night and believed it was more likely himself who had made the call to check his voicemail. Another clue found by the private investigator was a video from their apartment building's lobby Time stamped at 8.43 a.m., three minutes before Flight 11 crashed, 
It shows what appears to be the silhouette of a woman, who some believe may be Sinea, waiting for several minutes in the lobby and then leaving. Although difficult to see clearly, some believe the mysterious woman's body language and movements resembled Sinea's, and although she is wearing what appears to be similar clothing to the night before, the woman is not seen carrying any of the bags from the shopping trip. After viewing the lobby footage, Ron stated he could not positively ID his wife from that video. Although, a New York PD officer would later say they believe the woman could be Sinea. From the day of the attack and throughout their investigation, the initial belief of Ron and Sinea's family is that she had returned to the apartment that morning, possibly never entering, and given her background as a physician, rushed over to the towers to provide medical assistance. They believe it was while helping first responders she was lost to the day's events. Unfortunately, this theory on Sinea has never had any tangible evidence attached to it to put her at the towers that morning, or even to indicate that she even returned to the apartment. A statement by her brother that he had spoken with her during the attack was later admitted to as being false. It was an attempt to get some publicity on her disappearance. When the NYPD did eventually investigate Sinea's case, the information police uncovered would suggest a different set of circumstances and motivations that could possibly explain her disappearance. What may have seemed like just another late night out in the big city began to take on additional layers when put into context with the information police had uncovered about Sinea's recent lifestyle. The first revelation from the police report was that the budding young physician had not had her contract renewed by the medical center where she had been working. The reason given was described as alcohol-related issues. The report stated she had also been suspended from a new position at a medical center on Staten Island for failing to meet with an alcohol abuse counselor. The police report also found multiple signs of turbulence in her marriage with Ron. Apparently, she had been going out on her own for a while, often frequenting alternative lifestyle bars and clubs, some of them allegedly quite divey where she reportedly met women and was known to regularly spend the night out with them. Ron has denied the police reports that his wife was romantically involved with women, but admitted she had been going out a lot and did stay over at the homes of other female friends, although he claims it was platonic, and they would stay up talking, or even painting, he recounted in one story. He further claimed that Sinea going to lesbian bars was actually a way for her to avoid trouble. Sinea had recently been arrested and spent the night in jail for filing a false police report that a work colleague had groped her while out one evening. It was also learned that the very morning she was last seen, September 10th, Sinea would appear in court and plead not guilty to that case. The police report then claimed she and Ron had a huge fight afterwards at the courthouse. With this new information, Sinea's life was appearing far more complicated than initially thought. One initial theory that was considered was that Sinea could have taken advantage of the chaos and destruction of 9-11 to run away, but there was no evidence found that she was planning to do that. This included a thorough search of her laptop. There was also no indication she ever spoke to anyone about starting a new life, and she had not packed any belongings or made any other preparations to leave. Another theory that did seem more plausible, although like all the theories about Sinea, it came with absolutely no proof is that she went out for some drinks after shopping, met up with someone or a group of people and went over to their apartment or perhaps other bars and clubs. This opens the possibility of not only running into foul play, but even an accident or overdose at some unknown location in the New York City area. The police report was rejected by Ron and Sinea's family, who stated it was full of fabrications, such as the fight at the courthouse, which Ron claims never happened. They also rejected that Sinea had an alcohol problem or that her nights out partying were anything more than blowing off steam. Ron did concede that the two did not live a conservative lifestyle and that she had recently been through a depressed period, but he has always maintained that Sinea was not the person described in the police report. Despite her husband and family disagreeing with the report, it did prompt a judge to remove Sinea from the official list of 9-11 victims that she had been put on. Citing the lack of evidence she was even there on 9-11, and also that her personal and professional problems may have contributed to her disappearance more than was originally thought. In 2004, the court declared Sinea's official date of death as September 10th. This would launch a multi-year legal battle by Sinea's husband and family 
to overturn the ruling. In 2008, they were successful in their appeal, and Sinea was once again officially listed as a victim of the 9-11 attacks. The judge who reversed the lower court's ruling did make a point to explicitly state in the decision that even without direct proof to irrefutably establish that Sinea was at the World Trade Center at the time of the attack, he believed the evidence available indicated it was highly probable that she had died that morning and at that site. Adding, quote, whereas only the rankest speculation leads to any other conclusion. For her family, Sinea's designation as a victim of 9-11 has brought some closure, and with their blessing, her husband Ron has since remarried. In 2012, over 10 years since Sinea was last seen, an unknown person emailed this image to the website Post Secret, where users can anonymously confess via email. The eerie message, with what appears to be a drawing of the towers, left some followers of the case wondering if the card could be from Sinea. Although, once again, there is absolutely no evidence to support that, and in fact many believe the card and its connection to Sinea to be a hoax. Although why someone would do that over a decade later remains unknown. The postcard, like every other aspect of Sinea's case, lacks solid evidence. But that may be changing soon. In 2021, the New York Medical Examiner's Office announced it would begin using advanced DNA testing to hopefully identify some of the more than 1,100 victims from 9-11 who remain unidentified. Until then, the fate of Senea Phillip remains a matter of perspective, but with no physical evidence to support any outcome and no additional sightings or leads or eyewitness accounts from those who may have been with her that evening, Senea Phillip remains last seen in Lower Manhattan on a shopping trip in September 2001.